War II raged into its third year. Millions were dead. Peace was nowhere in sight. The success of the Nazis in Europe was due in part to Germany's ability to act secretly. Throughout the war, the Germans were dependent on super secret coding machines, including the renowned Enigma, to encrypt their messages. Codebreakers at Bludgeley Park, outside of London, worked desperately to crack the German system. The Enigma's codes were broken with a device perfected by the brilliant mathematician Alan Turing. As the war continued, Germans designed a second, much harder to break code system used for the highest level communications. The code was generated by the Lorenz, a teleprinter cipher machine that encrypted messages before transmission. Each coded message was combined with a sequence of obscuring letters. A German operator sent a 4,000 character message twice but he didn't follow the correct procedure to set up his Lorenz machine for the second transmission. English mathematician Bill Tutt spotted a pattern, and with this information, the Bletchley team was able to work out the complete logical structure of the Lorenz. But deciphering each message was labor-intensive, taking four to six weeks. Too long for those on the front lines. Bletchley codebreakers rushed to make improvements. Max Newman's team automated parts of the process to cut code-breaking time. Tommy Flowers replaced one of the paper tapes with electronics so that possible decryptions could be tried at a rate of 5,000 characters per second. Now, decryptions that once took weeks were completed in hours. The first machine went into service in the early part of December 1943 and was codenamed Colossus by Bletchley Park because it was the largest machine that they'd had to operate up to then. Suddenly, an enormous amount of information became decrypted and available, and by D-Day, it was almost an open book on the intentions of the German high command. To divert attention from plans to invade at Normandy, Allies launched a massive deception plan. Messages decoded by Colossus revealed the Nazis suspected nothing. The successful landing of Allied troops on D-Day was the turning point in the war. Following D-Day, Allies swiftly destroyed communication landlines. Germany was forced to rely on radio transmissions, transmissions decoded by Colossus. By the end of the war, 10 Colossus machines decoded messages around the clock. Historians now reckon that with the aid of the Mark II Colossi, we shortened the war by at least two years. Allied troops returned home to heroes' welcomes. But the inventors of Colossus were forced to remain silent about their role. With Cold War tensions stirring at war's end, Winston Churchill didn't want the Soviet Union to know the Lorenz Code could be broken. He ordered that the Colossus machines be destroyed, leaving pieces no bigger than a man's hand. Tommy Flowers himself burned the documentation. For 30 years, the Colossus remained a closely held secret. But in the 1970s, as government documents became available, its historic and technological importance was revealed. Colossus had many features now associated with digital computers. Some regard it as the first digital computer. In 1991, Tony Sale, a British expert on World War II code-breaking, gathered a team to rebuild Colossus and see it restored to its rightful place in history. All I had initially to go on were eight black and white photographs taken in 1945 and 10 fragments of circuit diagram kept illegally by engineers, as engineers always do. With advice from Tommy Flowers and others, the Colossus rebuild was completed in 1996. The Americans, for years, got away with the myth that their ENIAC computer was the first in the world, and that wasn't working till 1946. Once again at Bletchley Park, Colossus is honored not only for the war it helped end, 
but for the age of computing, it helped begin.